Hi there and a very good evening to you. I'm Patrick Falk in Hong Kong. You're watching View TV News, coming up on tonight's show. The Chinese president arrives in Hong Kong for handover celebrations and praises Si Wai Lung for protecting the country's sovereignty. Vatican treasurer to return to homeland Australia for sexual assault trial as the highest ranking church official ever to be charged. And the US to beef up security measures for flights to the country, but avoids expanding in-cabin ban on laptops. All right, we begin tonight with the highly anticipated visit of the Chinese president. Xi Jinping arrived in the city earlier today for his three-day trip amid heavy security. In a meeting with the chief executive, Xi told Xi Wai Lung he has Beijing's full support. Evelyn Lung reports. The president arrived Hong Kong on a private plane just before noon. Xi Jinping and his wife were greeted by former current and incoming government officials. Other Beijing officials also on this trip include State Councillor Wang Jiechi and Wang Guangya, the director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office. Xi delivered his first speech on the tarmac. Nine years and now I'm back on Hong Kong soil. I am very happy as Hong Kong has always been in my heart. In two days, the SAR will be celebrating the 20th anniversary of its handover back to China. This is a big, happy event for both the city and the country. He listed out the three aims of his trip, to offer his blessings to Hong Kong, to show support and to map out the city's future. She then headed to his Wan Chai Hotel where there's heavy police presence. Now, just to give you an idea of how tight security is here in Wan Chai, I'm standing on the bridge leading into the immigration tower, which is just right in front of the hotel that she is said to be staying at. There are quite a number of plainclothes and uniformed police officers patrolling the area, and they're also filming the people passing by. Nearby roads were blocked off with huge water barriers and roadblocks set up. Demonstrators are kept in protest zones away from the hotel for careful control during the president's stay. At the hotel, she met with Chief Executive C. Y. Leung and his team. The president praised Leung for protecting the country's sovereignty and upholding the spirit of the basic law over the past five years. She added the CE has Beijing's full support and hopes he will continue to contribute to the country in this new position as a vice chairman to the nation's top advisory body. Evelyn Lang, View TV News. Well, meantime, the Chinese First Lady Peng Li Yuan was on a charm offensive, meeting with local students at a kindergarten in Kowloon Tong. Peng was accompanied by the chief executive's wife, Regina Leung, to the Yao Yichun School this afternoon. Incoming Education Secretary Kevin Young was also there. They left within half an hour shaking hands with the school's teachers. Meantime, 26 demonstrators arrested by the police last night after protesting in Golden Bohemia Square are still detained at North Point Police Station. <laughs> Dozens of people showed up at the police station throughout the day demanding their release. They criticized police officers for holding them for more than 12 hours, yet not taking any statements about the case. Demosisto founder Joshua Wong and lawmaker Nathan Law were among the detainees who climbed onto the Golden Bohemia statue in Wan Chai last evening. On social media, Wong accused the police of dragging out the detention process to stop the group from joining the pro-democracy July 1st rally on Saturday. Now, a video showing Chinese Nobel Prize laureate Lu Xiaobo's time in prison has surfaced on YouTube. This comes as politicians and rights activists across the globe urge Beijing to release the liver cancer patient and question the quality of care he's receiving. In the video, Lu expresses his gratitude to the authorities who have been, quote, taking good care of him. Rights activist Hu Jia described it as a propaganda video designed to quell the intense criticism over how Lu was treated in jail. Separately, Shenyang authorities said Lu was given annual body checks since he was jailed in 2009 and insisted no irregularities were found until a month ago. 
To news, news elsewhere, and in a case that's shaking the Vatican to its core, the Pope has granted Cardinal George Pell leave to face trial in Australia over multiple sexual assault offences. Pell, the Catholic Church's treasurer, denies all allegations and says he is going home to clear his name. Samantha Vardas has the details. He's one of the top advisers to Pope Francis and now the highest ranking church official to be charged with sexual abuse. Today, Victoria Police have charged Cardinal George Pell with historical sexual assault offences. Cardinal Pell is currently the treasurer of the Vatican, but he'll be tried in his homeland of Australia. The Australian Catholic Church says Pell strenuously denies the charges and plans to return home to clear his name. There's been relentless character assassination. I'm looking forward, finally, to having my day in court. Uh, I'm innocent of these charges. They are false. Reuters Byron Kay is following the story from Sydney. And what happens now is that Pell has agreed to come um, to his um, official court date where he has to appear. Um, there was some concern that he may try to avoid that, which would have led to an extradition battle. But since Pell has agreed to come, the next step will be him facing the charges, possibly looking at receiving a brief of evidence uh, from the, the complainants. And then he will have the option to enter some sort of a plea. Police wouldn't specify the charges against Pell, the ages of the alleged victims or when the crimes are thought to have occurred. But the case has already posed a dilemma for the Pope, who's vowed zero tolerance for abuse. The fallout from this can't be understated. Um, obviously, Pell is a pretty high-profile scalp for them to get, even though he's not been found guilty. So that in itself is pretty damning and it sort of goes to a lot of the complaints that the problem, the rot within the church is going all the way to the top. It's the latest development in a long-running case that's seen investigations by police and the church. Pell has denied allegations throughout. Now, the United States has unveiled enhanced security measures for flights to the country without expanding an in-cabin ban on laptops. This should come as a relief for travellers who find it hard to part with their computers. The measures include beefed-up screening of passengers and devices and new plans designed to mitigate the potential threat of insider attacks. However, an airline trade group says the changes might cause more disruptions as this could mean extra times needed to clear the 325,000 arrivals in American airports daily. The measures will take effect within three weeks and came with a strong warning to the airlines. In action is not an option. Those who choose not to cooperate or are slow to adapt, adopt these measures could be subject to other restrictions, including a ban on electronic devices on aircraft or even a suspension of their flights into the United States. All right, as if flying isn't difficult enough already these days. Anyway, coming up next, the latest from the world of business. Good evening. Well, Hong Kong stocks have shot up to their highest level in nearly three weeks, and Xi Jinping's arrival may very well have played a part in that. The Hang Seng Index finishing the day up 1.1%, with financials really the driving force behind today's spike. Investors betting that Beijing will unveil a suite of pro-Hong Kong policies as the city marks 20 years since the handover. And that gamble may very well pay off, with President Xi saying he will work towards ensuring Hong Kong's autonomy in the future. Now, staying here in the city, and it seems Hong Kongers aren't shying away from the shops anymore. Retail sales were up half a percent for May compared to this time last year, the third straight month of rebounds. The government puts the numbers down to a boost in tourism and the resilience of the consumer demand locally. Just when Toshiba thought its problems couldn't get worse, they have. The Japanese conglomerate has missed its self-imposed deadline to sell off its prized memory chip unit and in a new twist it's now suing its joint venture partner for one billion US dollars. David Pollard reports. It was supposed to be a red letter day for Toshiba but this is one the Japanese tech firm has missed. Wednesday's deadline to tie up an 18 billion dollar deal to sell its prized chip unit postponed amid differences, it says, within the consortium chosen as the preferred bidder. Toshiba desperately needs the cash after cost overruns at its bankrupt US nuclear unit, last week revealing losses that 
at a predicted $9 billion will be even bigger than expected. The pain doesn't stop there. Toshiba now declaring it'll sue its chip-making joint venture partner, Western Digital, for $1 billion for interfering in the sale. Western Digital is seeking an injunction to stop it going through without its consent, which it claims would breach contracts. It's also raised concerns over sharing technology with SK Hynix, the South Korean firm that is one member of the consortium. Though in a saga full of twists and turns, announced on Tuesday that it's to resubmit its own bid for the chip business. Protests are raging across India with textile traders furious over a new tax which they say will kill their business. They've shut down shops as part of a three-day nationwide strike against a 5% levy, which will hit the industry from next month. Many traders saying the sector has never seen a cost like this before and the procedure to file taxes is too complex, especially for those in poor rural areas. The GST is being hailed as India's biggest tax overhaul since independence. Now, think James Bond, but real life. Israel's intelligence agency is on the lookout for new cutting-edge spy technology and, as Mia Reeks reports, it's offering grants for anyone whose project fits the cloak and dagger mould. Get ready. He's on his way. It might look like the trailer for a spy movie, but this is actually an advert from Israel's Mossad intelligence agency. set up an investment fund to help develop new cloak and dagger techniques and is offering grants of up to $570,000 per project to bring in new ideas. The fund called Libertad will give Mossad a strong, direct and fruitful connection to the pool of groundbreaking technological brains that lead the field here in Israel. The designs of tomorrow. We have built the fund to support visionary entrepreneurs who work to fulfill their dreams. It will allow us to use their developments in order to fulfill our national mission. Mossad's looking for new tech in